time to take a look at the dailies on daybreak. We begin with the Daily Trust newspaper where we have the lead story on insecurity. It says, bandits return to Kaduna Abuja Highway, abducted 30. It has the riders that says block road for 45 minutes. That's on page four. Basically, that's the main story on the Daily Trust front page today. Let's move on to the Punch newspaper this morning. The major story there says Tinubu orders two trillion naira poverty relief funds probe. Edu faces the EFCC today. Security aides stop Edu from meeting the president. Buhari minister grilled for about 12 hours. Now, this is the major story, and you can find this and more on the Punch newspaper today. All right, let's move on to the Daily Sun this morning. Beside the headmaster, it says EFCC grills detains ex humanitarian affairs minister over alleged 37 billion naira misappropriation. The major story says suspended minister better a two weeks away in security truck, denied access to Tinubu, as rock tag withdrawn. President directs finance minister to conduct diagnostic uh, investigations, and EFCC begins the grilling today. You find this major story on page six. Violation of rights, court awards a mayfield 100 million naira damages against the federal government. Narada is saying EFCC to appeal judgment. Now, if you want to see more on that story, you'll find on page four federal government, some states implementing grand plot against the Igbo. That's according to Bianca Ojuku Rivers. Court reserves judgment in speaker's suit against Fubara and NAS. UBA surpasses 1 trillion naira market capitalization mark amidst the impressive financials and recognitions. The court adjourns Namdekano's 1 billion naira suit against the federal government, the DSS, until March 4th. Uh, beside that, we have the federal government wrecking Nigeria's economy with huge debt. That's according to B. Brands Tinubu's government epitome of profligacy. And below the bell there, it says Abia North, APC supports groups and Hail Kalu. Now, these are some of the stories on Daily Sun. All right. So, now uh, let's take a look at the Nation newspaper this morning, where you have the lead story says Beta Edu faces EFCC grilling. Uh, you have other stories above the masthead. 37 billion naira EFCC quizzes ex minister Sadia. APC picks a do candidate February 17. NDRC takes over disco over poor performance. Uh, you also have other stories. Alia trium triumphs at Supreme Court. Ae Datiwa rejects forgery claim. Super Eagles land in Lagos. UBA crosses one trillion naira cap mark. So these are some of the stories on the Nation newspaper. All right, and let's move on to uh, the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, the top of the page says anti graft war EFCC quizzes Sadia and invites better Edu. Minister suspended to allow transparent probe. That's according to the agency. Edu spotted at Asu, uh, the Asu Villa. Interior minister distances self from humanitarian ministry contract. You find all this on page four of the leadership newspaper there now this uh you know this is the major story there and you can find more on the leadership today on the guardian newspaper this morning uh still on the better edu saga and the humanitarian ministry it says 585 million uh, humanitarian scandal efcc quizzes embattled edu others as anti-graft uproar heightens you also have other stories. NERC cancels Disco's license over 110 billion naira debt, uh, points sole administrator. Security guards bugs life imprisonment over sexual assault. Uh, subscribers suffer service disruption over 70 billion naira interconnect uh, debts. UBA exceeds 1 trillion naira market capitalization mark. 
Uh, reps blame Agric Ministry for delay in sharing Tinubu's palliative. OB uh, deplores huge uh, borrowing profligate spending on luxury. These are the main stories on the Guardian newspaper. All right. Uh, and with that, of course, uh, we will now review the front pages of uh, the National Dailies with Dr. Theophilus Abba, the Program Director of Daily Trust Foundation. Thank you so much and good morning. Uh, for, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much and uh, good morning. Happy New Year once again. Yeah, yes, yes, indeed. Last time we, we spoke <laughs> about Zoom. All right, yes. Doctor, let's uh, get your take on you know the majority uh, of story it's still we're still in the buzz of what's happening in the humanitarian uh, ministry of humanitarian and, and poverty elevation what what is your take on exactly what is happening i mean we we heard how uh, the president even rejected seeing her because right uh, going to the Aso Villa, she was uh, her, her pass was taken away from her would you say that you uh, expected the president's reaction to be this harsh well, um, I don't think um, the president's reaction was harsh. Um, but I'm feeling that, you see, uh, the way she approached, you know, uh, the accusation, it was like, this is a normal thing. You understand? He said, okay, you paid 500 and something million into a private account. I said, well, what's wrong with that? Now, that means that... I mean, but doctor, hasn't this been normalized in the civil service? I mean, is it only because we're hearing that of the humanitarian affairs? Isn't it the practice in virtually all the Now, if you look uh, at the, the financial regulation, it shouldn't be so. But then, for uh, if, you, if you go on Gospent, Gospent is um, a platform, a portal, where all government contracts are uploaded. I mean, whatever government pays for contracts, they are uploaded on that, on that platform. If you go on Gospent, you would find... So many such transactions where funds are paid into private individuals' accounts, you know. But then the argument is that, oh, this money, you know, if you have to distribute them, maybe it's, maybe it's made for, uh, for staff travels. Like, that is, that is what the argument that came up now. Made for staff travels. So if you pay it into, into the account of one staff, then it is paid, it is now paid into the accounts of other uh, staff members. But one of the things that... Um, Why can't that money be sent to all the staffs at the same time from one account? Well, that, that, is, uh, that is the argument that, I mean, uh, I'm talking about the argument from a uh, mini civil servant. But one of the things that uh, shocked me was the fact that, you see, the memo, I don't know if you, if you read the details, the memo which was raised for some of these expenses included flight ticket to Lokoja or Kogi State. I don't know. And of course you know that there is no airport in in, uh, in Kogi State. There is no airport in Kogi State. So if you are, I mean, are approving two hundred thousand for flight ticket for your staff to fly from Abuja to Kogi State, you know, it becomes an issue. Because how are you flying to Kogi State? What are you going to hire a private jet? So you there is this thing people are saying, uh, Doctor. Could it be that? This uh, are women, which now people are saying, women seem to be the one that are easily caught uh, right in action. Could you say that it's because they are not really good in having, you know, in hiding these things? Because typically of what happened was that immediately this allegation came out, better without even making her own research on her own, and get, granted an interview with channels, we saw that. Mm. And she, she actually, like... Uh, should I say it just roped herself mm. in by by the interview that she gave? So could it be that if there is more probe in other ministries, there would be a not, huge not, in, not only in, in this, that same ministry. You see, because my feeling is that this is the that was the common practice. You understand? And I know that if you talk about a memo being raised to I mean for payment, or there are other there are, there are other I mean uh, layers of approvals. There's an internal auditor. You know, there's the PAMSEC, you understand? There are other staff who are involved, who are in the system, who know what ought to do, what ought to happen, or not, what, what, not, what, what ought not to happen. And I tell you also, there's what we call anti-corruption desk in almost every ministry. That means they are supposed to, to look at transactions. It means I say, no, this one does not align with the policies of government. So, so I where are all these people now? We are expecting to see them, isn't it? They are yeah, supposed that's to be what, That's what I'm driving at. So I am expecting the EFCC to do a holistic review. 
of what has been happening in that ministry. You know, previously we heard so much, you know, oh, this is, if I, the best place to work under the Buhari government, I was told, was the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. Because, I mean, you travel to places, you are going to deliver money to the people, and you are going, getting your own cut. You know, you go to, from state to state to deliver funds, you are giving to vulnerable, and you are putting some in your own pocket. A whole lot of that we heard happened. You know, so I'm feeling that this is just like the tip of the iceberg. Let all the vouchers, you know, I saw the FC to look at all the vouchers that, you know, that, that have been issued for payments. I mean, for even to uh, the, what we call the vulnerable people over the, all, all over, the, over the years. See, that ministry was established in 2019. Let's look at what has happened over, over that period. If we do that, we will now discover that if there was a system in place, a system that did not align with the financial regulations of government. So it, when we talk about uh, better, it do, yeah, she just, even when I heard that speak, she was like, I'm innocent. This was in practice before I came. You know, so why are you able to make noise about it? Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I don't. I think uh, Tinubu may have think been shocked. There's probably a political dimension to the whole uh, saga. There are people who are raising issues about the fact that maybe because of some kind of internal politics within the ministry or between the presidency and the ministry and so on to no, take her out of the office. No, I'm feeling that you see when something is wrong, it is wrong. You understand? We are not supposed to pay such amount into a private account. You shouldn't have paid. So if we are not talking yeah, about but, politics, but, yeah, and all this and all yes, that, yes, we know that, that this is, is wrong. That is actually second. What is wrong is wrong, yes. and we know that. Mm. But we have agreed that this is more like a, a practice that has been ongoing for mm. years. It's yes. not. It didn't start with the, the minister the, the, the of humanitarian yeah. affairs, Better Edu, right? So where do we start the investigation from? Can we treat a Better Edu's case in isolation? No, you cannot. Because you see, if if uh, if I were involved in the investigation, we have to open all the books. We have to audit what has happened since 2019, you know, because I think Betty met a system in place. And she was trying to say, okay, this is how things are being done. Let me continue. She didn't set up a new system. Speaking of, of the system in place, yes. what is your take on the probe on uh, the former minister of that same agency? Do you think that uh, we would get a better result of at least uh, Nigerians' taxpayers' money would come back? Well, you see, if, if looking at Sadia, the probe, probe of uh, Sadia over what you call money laundering, I know she said that the person involved, you know, the one James Okwete or so, Okwete, that she doesn't, she did not even know the person. And when you talk about money laundering, when you talk about money laundering, it is a system in which criminally acquired money is being brought into the system to make it look legal. Mm. And I'll give you an example. For instance, if somebody does Yahoo Yahoo, you understand? He gets a lot of money from Yahoo Yahoo. Then he, gets, he goes to company B that does legitimate business. I say, give me, um, uh, give, give me supply, I mean, give me the contract to supply maybe drinks, you know, or maybe to, to, to uh, give me a uh, contract to clean your hotel. I'm just giving an example now. Then you give him a contract to clean your hotel, and this money for Yahoo Yahoo is paid into your account, then you now give him the commission. That means that, you see, you are, that, that money that was got from fraud is now brought into the system um, to make it legitimate. What I'm trying to bring about is this. Even though Sadia claims not to know this person, it's most possible, it's probably, that there was a system put in. Maybe this guy was a supplier, you know, and money was stolen from somewhere or another, or even the money was paid into his account because he supplied some things. Maybe not up to the quantity that, 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 was, uh, that was delivered. Maybe she, she was not even dealing with the person directly. Maybe there was a front. Because I tell you, 37 billion is not a small amount of money. And I don't think there's any minister, no matter how naive the person is, that 37 billion will pass through her ministry to somebody. As you say, I did not know. Unless there was so much money in the system that people were just stealing money. If not 37 billion, you can't claim not to know, you know, how 37 billion moved from your ministry to somebody's account. So, you see... It, yes, okay. it has a lot of work to do. And I, I'm thinking that there's excess money in that ministry. Mm. Because the World Bank is giving them grants. Mm. The federal government is giving them grants. 
international organizations are giving them grants, and there is all these statistics about poverty, about uh, what do you call it, mm. about uh, vulnerable people, mm. about our imagery, Sati about this. Statistics that we statistics. cannot really even vouch Yeah, we for. cannot. Even, so, and they are, they are cashing on it. You say, oh, there's poverty here. Let's give them money. There's poverty. Let's give them money. Do you know, even in the last days of Sadia, she was advocating for a one bank loan of uh, about some, uh, some millions, uh, millions of dollars. About three days to go, she was saying, oh, let's get this approval. Because there is every document to prove that there's poverty. But if we evaluate the impact of what the ministry has done in, since 19, I mean 2019, I don't think they have made enough, they, they made much impact. Which means that some people were busy making themselves, you know, fat with money from, uh, for, in the name of uh, alleviating poverty, in the name of humanitarian activities. Okay. So, I, so I think there has to be an overhaul. And I, I think I like what the president has said, mm -hmm. that the system has to be reviewed generally. Okay. To ensure that uh, this fraud does not continue. All right. So, um, by the singular action of suspending the minister, a lot of people have commended the president for swiftly acting and uh, making sure that whoever is caught, mm -hmm. you know, in the whole web is brought to justice and so on. Uh, do you think that the president should extend further, the, you know, the, the net of investigation? to not only the humanitarian ministry, but even activities done under the previous administration as well. We've, we've seen a lot of you know, such practices in the previous government. Mm. Well, um, let me just say that I'm not happy that, I mean, this woman was involved and she has been suspended. Because we are, we are, I'm advocating that look, there should be more women, you know, to be, I mean, to be, uh, to, uh, should, should be given such positions in government. So I'm not happy that she made this mistake. And she's been, I mean, uh, uh, suspended. I hope she, I hope she'll be able to clear, you know, herself and return to that position, you know. But you see, we we know that what is happening to the Nigerian economy is as a result of massive fraud, you know. Hypothetically, let me put it that way, under the previous government, there was massive fraud, you know, that need to be investigated. You see, I keep advocating that a lot of money must be returned to the system, because you see, if you look at uh, what happened at the CBN, you know, and what um, at the report by Jim uh, uh, um, Obazi, mm -hmm. you know, has unraveled, you know, it means that some persons were deliberately taking money out of the system, using their positions, using uh, their contacts in government. And so much money was removed. We need this money back because the Nigerian economy is so battered. We are in a very difficult, I mean, in condition. And, I mean, when you hear, I mean, all this is happening, I think we need to bring back a lot of money into the system. And the only way you can do it is by probing the previous government. That is one. But secondly, we must put in place a system that will prevent such things from happening. For those of us who have been watching government for some years now, every other government that comes will tell you that oh, the previous government was bad, the previous government was corrupt, the previous government stole. You know, I mean... When uh, Buhari came, he said there was an empty treasury. He said well, there was fraud everywhere. Yeah. You understand? He, he said all those things. Then we are, Buhari has left. We are hearing Tunubu. The same political party. You know, they say telling us the same thing. We made an empty treasury. And I, can, I don't believe that there was an empty treasury. Because a whole lot of loans were acquired by government. A lot of... So if you tell us there was an empty treasury, then somebody must be held accountable. You see, if the, I mean, look at the income, look at the loans. Okay. Where, where, where is the money? Yes. There has to Do, be a, a kind of investigation uh, to, yeah, for us to yeah. recover what has been stolen. Yeah. Doctor, sometimes it, it's, it's difficult to come to terms with sometimes what leaders say and the realities on ground in terms of issues of corruption. And you get a sense of perhaps maybe that the, 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 mass, the corruption in the system is so massive that the president, as a person, for instance, uh, cannot deal with it because of how strong, you know, the, 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 the corrupt system has grown and how long it has taken uh, and all, uh, all of that. This issue of cabals, you know, is this really an illusion or is it real? And how can, you know, the president, for instance, go beyond that and deal with the issues of corruption head on? Okay, now uh, when you use the word cabal, you know, when you use the word cabal, you know, it's uh, there's what you call a uh, semantic, uh, um, I don't know, impl implications of the word. Now, cabal may look like an inner caucus. I don't, I, if you use the word inner caucus, 
There's no government that does not have an inner caucus. In any organization, even if it's not a government agency, there must be an inner caucus. So it is not wrong for the government to have an inner caucus. But when you talk about a cabal, which has a negative uh, connotation, it means that these guys are involved in, in fraud. They are involved in illegal activities. You know? So I think that there will always be what I'll call inner caucus in any government. They will always be doing But it's that. a speculation that's been on the street that there, yeah. there are people that are all about selfish interests and yes. these people are mm. powerful people. Yes. Now, but, the, but what I'm driving at is that, you see, I think the whole thing depends on the body language of the president. If the president is corrupt, then others will be corrupt. No matter how he comes out to, to say he fights corruption, they know, that, they know that this guy is corrupt now. Uh -huh. This is what he's doing. So why is he complaining? All of us are doing the same thing. You understand? <laughs> right, so if, if he's not corrupt, then, he, then his body language will say, I cannot condone corruption. Then everybody will fall in line. Because, you see, there is, in the, like I keep saying, if you go to any ministry, mm, in government, any government ministry today, any government agency, the, 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 the least person, the security man at the gate knows what the minister is doing. I'm telling you. They, because they know what is right and they know what is not right. Because all of them have read all the rules, civil service rules. They, they have read the civil service rules. They know what the minister is. If you make any of them minister, they can do the job. Right. Because they know what the minister should do and what the minister should not do. Right. But the thing is that if there is no a, a deliberate attempt to say these rules must be obeyed, they will continue to have corruption. So I want to hear your thoughts on what is happening uh, with Emi Felix's case. We all know how sometimes Nigeria would come uh, make noise about certain issues and then another one would come and suppress that one. So right now uh, the humanitarian ministry is having that, is suppressing a Mayfield's own. And right now we're realizing that there's been a, uh, there's been uh, you know things uh, in court and there's violation of rights and a uh, Mayfield has been granted to 100 million uh, naira of damages. It, it's, why are we seeing this now? Like, should, uh, even though it's saying that the FCC are going to appeal the judgment, but then what is going on? Could it be that uh, the, the uh, EFCC did not really guide at what is really needed before taking this to court? And how did we get from accusing him of uh, from doing a lot of things allegedly to now paying him another hundred uh, a million uh, a naira or, uh, you know, as compensation? You know, actually, I, I think what happens is, what the, I think the white man says, putting the cart before the horse. You know, the horse is supposed to drive the cart, but then we put the cart before the horse, so it's the other way around. You know, you, what, I, what, what ought to have been done is this. Before taking a mefile, a mefile before arresting a mefile, the EFCC, the DSS, they ought to have done their investigation conclusively, or near conclusively. So that by the time Emifile is, is taken to court or was taken to court, you know what you what you will see is oh these are the these are these are the things that you have done, these are the evidences that we have gathered against you, these are the witnesses against you. Now respond, you understand? But in this case, he was taken out of circulation, you know, beyond the number of days that he was supposed to be in detention. Then you began to gather uh, what do you call it? I mean, uh, you begin to began to look for his faults. Even Jim Obazi's report is being disputed right now. Because, you know, the, the aspect of hearing the other side, fair mm. hearing, mm. you know, they are saying that they were not even given the opportunity to, to speak. From what we know about basic investigation, you know, documents are not enough. You know, if you have documents to say this person stole money, it's not enough. You see, there are other things that you need to do. You need to prove that, look, these things, you don't know, tell us how these things were done. Now, even if you say Mayfield stole money and you get to the court, the court will say, okay, he stole money, yes. How do you know? You understand? You have to now bring witnesses. We say, well, Mayfield stole this money. I, I was there. I was, I, he forced me to sign this. He forced me to do that and all this. And that. So is, if you don't do this thing conclusively and you take somebody to, prison, to, to court, then to prison over a period of two, three, four months, the person will have to say, look, you, you violated my rights. And that's been the problem we have with the investigative systems in this, all the agencies of government that do investigation. They don't complete the investigation before the arrest. You know, they say we are taking out to investigate, so we can investigate. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you see, there are discrete approaches to get gathering information, gathering evidence, and you have to, have to complete these things. You know, because, of course, you are government. You have all the instruments, you have all the authority, you know, to call anybody to question. 
You know, you can even call even his staff to question why you are doing your investigation. They'll give you all the evidence, then you now take it to court. But when you now drag him to court and dump him there and you are waiting for somebody to tell you, what do, I, what do we do now? It's okay, take him to Kuje. What do we do now? Oh, we take him to Lagos prison. What do we do now? Somebody is giving you instruction. Mm. Instead of you acting based on, or based on the rule or based on the evidence that In you fact, have. In even, fact, even, even we've so, seen court violations at some point uh -huh. as regards the you know, issue of the MFLA case where the court gave an injunction you know, for him to be remanded in the custody of the uh, correctional services, and then he was whisked away, away by, by the security DSS security. and so on. So, so we see a lot of interference. You know, the security just maybe not even being allowed to do their jobs. Somebody giving them instruction, this one should die, this one should do another. So it will complicate issues. Does this and for anybody who can the... fight for his right, yeah, you go to court and Do you say, think that this reinforces the whole notion that this whole MFLA case is more politically motivated? Well, as far as, as, far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think it is witch hunt. You know, because even when he was CBN governor, sincerely, we kept shouting, you know, we kept saying, this is wrong. This money is missing. Right. This money is not accounted for. You cannot be using the CBN as a loan, as, I mean, to be giving loan to individuals. You are doing the work of a commercial bank. We kept shouting, this is not being accredited, I mean, accounted well, doctor, for. I mean, we so, at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, Nigerians, uh, you know, need to keep the momentum of holding these people mm. and following every case and not forgetting them until we know we know for certain that the law has taken its cost. Thank you so much, Dr. Theophilus Abba, Program Director, Daily Trust Foundation, for joining us this morning. Thank you very much.